So if we run the game now, we have a look. Okay, follows us. Can shoot, and he is dead. This video is going to go over some basic ways that we could create enemies, and let's get straight into it. So we're going to use what is called a finite state machine, and we're going to use that to create an enemy and define how it moves and what sort of logic is contained within it. So I'm going to create a new game object, I'm going to reset the values, I'm going to call this enemy and I'm going to add a tag so I'm going to add an enemy tag okay and I'm going to click it on I'm going to add a box collider 2d I'm going to add a sprite renderer okay put a square in let's make it a bit of a <clears throat> bit of a gray color okay and I'm going to drag it over here Cool. I'm also just gonna. Mm. Yeah, that's all good. Now we have our enemy. We probably want to add a script in, so I'm gonna go create C sharp script, and I'm gonna create an enemy controller. So if we just open that up, just drag it over. Okay. To create our finite state machine, we want to use an enum. So outside of our class, I'm going to type public enum and I'm going to call it enemy state. Okay. And in here, we probably want a few types of states. So we probably want a wandering state so you can just walk around, a follow state, and a die state for now. Okay. And we want to make sure we put a semicolon at the end of this. Okay. So, inside our class, um, we're going to want to reference the player. So, I'm going to do game object player. Okay, so we can get a reference to it. We want an enemy state variable. So, I'm going to do public enemy state and I'm going to call it current state. Okay, I'm going to set the current state equal to enemy state dot wonder. Okay. So by default, it's going to be wandering around until we find a player and then we'll make it follow the player. So I also want a public float, which is going to be the range um, in which the enemy can see. As well as that, we want a public float speed. And that's probably all we need for now. So in the start, we are going to set player equal to Whoop. Game object dot find. Uh, whoop. Find game object with tag. Okay, and we want to find the player, and it will set it to the player game object. Now we're initializing it within our start because if in the future we want to spawn our enemies in, we don't want to manually be able to drag our player into each one. <clears throat> Can't really do that if you're instantiating enemies at runtime. So, now in our update, um, we want to do a switch statement based on our current state, okay? So we're going to do different things based on the state. And firstly, we have our case, enemy state dot wonder, okay? So if we're wandering around, we probably want to call the a wonder function. Whoop wonder and then break okay now case enemy state dot, whoop, dot follow just break it and then case um, enemy state dot die okay now doesn't understand what wonder is but that's okay. And we're gonna add a follow in as well. And we should probably add a death function. But we'll leave that blank for now. So, 
firstly, we want a void wonder. Okay, right here. And to make the um, compiler happy, we want a void follow. Okay. So, um, to check whether we're wandering or following the player, okay, we probably want to create a boolean vari variable, okay. We probably want to create a bool variable, and um, we can actually like turn it into a method. So I can call a public, or sorry, actually make this one private. So private bool um, is player in range, okay? And we're going to grab the range in as well. So when we check if the player is in range, we're actually just going to return the distance between our current position and the player's position. So, and we're also going to check whether that is less than or equal to the range. So I'm going to do vector three dot distance. Okay, from the transform dot position to the player's transform dot position, and we're going to make sure that is less than or equal to range. Okay, so. If it is less than the range, it's going to return true, and else it's going to return false. So now that we have that, um, in our update, we can check for that. So we're going to do if is player in range with the range that we typed in. Okay. Um, and we probably want to check that we're not dead as well. So, so long as we're alive as well then we can um, follow, okay? So enemy state dot die. So if we are, then we can switch our current state to enemy state dot follow, okay? Now we're gonna do else if the player is player in range is not in the range, okay? And we're also not dead, so current state does not equal enemy state dot die. Um, then simply we want to set our current state equal to enemy state dot wonder. Okay. So now that we're checking that, and it's actually gonna switch over to wonder and follow based on if we're within our range, but we need to check how to wonder. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to add some new variables in, okay? And if we go up to the top, I'm going to grab a private ball, and I'm going to go choose direction, I'm going to equal to false, okay, private ball dead, oh sorry, actually we'll keep that equals false because we need to check whether we're dead further on and we will also have a private vector 3 value and that's going to be a random direction so we're going to be able to use these two um, to define a random direction for our enemy to wander in okay so firstly we want to do if we haven't chosen a direction then we want to choose a direction and I'm going to use a coroutine for that. So I'm going to do start coroutine, um, choose direction. Okay. Now this is going to error because we haven't created a coroutine. So we're going to do that now. So I, oops. so we're going to do a private IE numerator and I'm going to call it choose direction. Now in here, firstly we're going to set choose direction equal to true because we're choosing a direction right now and then we're going to wait a random amount of time, okay, so yield return new, wait for seconds, um, and we can do a random dot range between 
Um, I'm do about like two seconds and eight seconds. So it's gonna change um, to a value in between that, okay? And after that, it's gonna set a random direction. I'm gonna set it to a new vector three, okay? Zero, zero, and random dot range between zero and 360 degrees, okay? Now we're using the Z um, axis for rotation because if you go in here and you go to our enemy, whoop, if we go to our Z and drag it along, it rotates like that and that's exactly how we want to rotate it in 2D. In 3D it would be a different story, maybe you want to rotate by the Y, okay, or the X, um, but we want to use Z. So if we go back in here, so back in here, um, we set our random direction and now we want to grab a quaternion. I'm going to call it next rotation. Okay. And it's going to be equal to a quaternion. Whoops, can't spell. Quaternion dot Euler. Okay. And that is in the random direction. So we're just going to be using an Euler angle here. Um, if you don't understand that as well, there is some good documentation on the Unity API and I will leave a link below. Okay. Um, and now we're going to update our rotation. So transform.rotation is going to equal to a quaternion dot loop. And we're going to loop our transform.rotation to our next rotation. Okay, um, over a random amount of time. So this could be between half a second and maybe maybe two and a half seconds if you'd like. Okay, whoops, I actually forgot to type in the range part. There we go. Alrighty, so after we've done that and we've chosen our direction and we've set it, we're going to set choose direction equal to false. So now once it's false, it's going to start choosing another direction over a certain amount of time. So it's just going to loop through this while we're wandering, which is pretty cool. But now we need to actually move. So we want our transform.position to plus equal to our negative transform.right times by speed times by time dot delta time. Okay. And lastly, we want to check whether we're in range. So if we're in range, if is player in range with our range, okay. Then our current state is gonna to equal to enemy state dot follow. Okay, so it's gonna break the loop, go into our follow state. Sweet. For our following code, what we wanna do is a transform dot position okay I'm gonna set that equal to a vector 2 dot move towards okay so we're gonna grab the transform dot position and we're gonna grab the player dot transform dot position and we're gonna grab the speed and we're gonna times it by by time dot delta time okay so yes yeah, so that should move it we have a look now go back in okay check it out moves around okay follows us but hmm he's going a random direction now okay because it's in the wonder now he's following us walk out now it's walking down awesome so we can't actually shoot our character. Um, we can't actually shoot our enemy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our bullet controller. Okay. And um, we're going to add a avoid on trigger enter 2D. Okay. I'm going to have a collider 2D. I'm just going to call it Col, okay? Now, 
we want to grab the um, coal.tag and if that's equal to enemy, okay, so if our bullet collides with an enemy, um, then we can grab coal.gameObject.getComponent um, enemy controller, okay, dot um, death, okay. So that's basically going to call our death function or our death method that we haven't created yet. So if we go back into our enemy controller, we add a new void, okay. And it's going to be a public one because we want to access it elsewhere. So public void death, okay. So for now, we just want to destroy game object, okay. So we just go in here and we have a look we shoot dead okay now our bullet doesn't despawn so we also want to destroy our own bullet okay perfect so if we run the game now we have a look okay follows us we can shoot and he is dead. Oh, cool. So I hope you guys um, learned something new from this and hopefully this should give you some ideas on maybe what you could do next, some different types of enemies that you could do. Okay, you can use the exact same script, um, but you might have to work out how to maybe uh, say what type of enemy it is, okay? And give it different stats based on the type of enemy. Maybe you could have like a shooting enemy, okay? Um, and we might go over that in a future video.